man's personality and character is exuded through his haircut. Your image is important. Our high-end services range from a traditional haircut and shave to gray blending, beard shaping, and unwanted hair removal. Located at 425 Victoria Avenue East, book your appointment online now at modernmen.ca or call Tammy, 306-522-4111. Modern Men, a haircut for the modern man. Hello, I'm Sean McNall, owner of TG Marketing. We are a promotional product company located in Regina, Saskatchewan. Originally founded by Tom G. McNall in 1985, we are now in our 35th year of business. My brother Ryan and I, along with our great staff, have carried the torch since Tom retired in 2011. For those of you who don't know what we do, we sell items with a company's logo on it like clothing, pens, phone chargers, Bluetooth speakers. The list of products available is endless. Our products are a great form of advertising. Whether you want to give a gift to a valued client or show your appreciation to your staff, we have a friendly team that can help find the right product for your needs. The key to our success has been our customer service and our vast knowledge of products in our industry. We ask the right questions to get you in line with the proper product for the project you are working on. Stop by 1046 Winnipeg Street and view our showroom. Get some ideas for that next promotion you're working on. Let's make your business what everyone's talking about. It's kind of a funny story. I was on a stationary bike this morning watching the World Junior coverage. I'm like, we should have Rich Sutter as our World Juniors insider. Boom, send. I sent it to Rich. How about that? Not Clark. <laughs> so Rich wrote me back. I'm in! When Christmas rolls around, everybody's going to be locked down. You're all, we're all going to be watching the World Juniors, and we'll all convene here every morning to talk about the game the night before and tee up the next night's game. This is the Rod Peterson Show. Good morning, Canada and Canadian sports fans around the world. Welcome to the RP Show. We are back on Game Plus TV, and we're very excited about it. Yeah. How are you doing, Moose? I'm great. Brand new week, and uh, as you can see by the guest board, a lot of hockey talk coming up. NHL great, current pro scout, Columbus Blue Jackets, Rich Sutter will be joining us here right in the bunker in hour one. He is here scouting in the Dub Hub. We're very excited to welcome Richie to the show here. He's already won the rock star of the day for Rockstar Supply Chain Solutions. He's got the hat. It's already done. And in hour two from the Winnipeg Jets radio broadcast crew, Jamie Thomas will be joining us uh, because I'm wondering. Well, I'll get to the question here in the in the uh, quick six show topics. Let me just say this. How was your weekend? It was awesome. You know, it seemed like really quiet and almost too long. I'm waiting to get back in here. And then it kind of got jump started early. It felt like the weekend ended at about uh, uh, seven o'clock last night when we showed up to the rink. Yeah, you know, yeah, it was, was. Yeah, that's totally it. But I had predicted a lot of pizza pops and NASCAR mm -hmm. on the weekend, yeah. and I didn't really have much of either. Well, that's probably a good. Well, watching, not the NASCAR, but the pizza. I was pop. watching National Hot Rod Association races out of Vegas, though. Sweet. So, but not NASCAR. All right, let's go to the quick six show topics, please, Director Jordan. <laughs> I'm going to get to the football topics, but first I'm just going to say Sunday's NHL leftovers. We were doing a hockey game last night in the Dub Hub, so your Leafs, did it kill you not to be able to watch your Leafs in I Vancouver? I watched most of it. I didn't get to watch the end of it, so it Which was Which is nice. what, all that mattered. <laughs> it was all that mattered was the end of it. Well, sure. that's the thing. Was there only one game in the NHL Sunday? Because it seemed that way. That's yeah, no. my, my first leftover. This morning on SportsCenter, 10 minutes dedicated to the Canucks and the Leafs, which Vancouver won in overtime. And I 
kind of kid. I kid. It was an impressive win by Vancouver. I see one of our first commenters here said, Kenneth from Regina says, how shocked are you to see Vancouver win after weeks away? Was that a shock? It wasn't it? It was in their barn. You wondered, like, I, I kind of thought it was either going to go one way or the other, like it was going to be on the extremes, right? They were going to be really rested and they were going to come out and flying or they were going to get taken behind the woodshed. But you know what? When you have games like this or you have things that the team goes to get goes through and you kind of have your back against the wall, those teams seem to come out together, right? You get to see what they're made of. And so it tells me a lot about the culture in Vancouver. Yeah, and I guess they're not predictable, but it looked like a heck of a hockey game. Again, we were in the double, but it's led to my question. Who is the number one team in Canada? Because Toronto beat Edmonton, Winnipeg beat Toronto, Edmonton beat Winnipeg. <laughs> it's I know. like a cat chasing its tail. Who is the best team in Canada, and does it even matter? I mean, we'll get into this with Rich Sutter next segment when he joins us, but how important is it to finish in first in Canada? Obviously, you want to finish as high as you can, but how important is it versus, well, we're in the home stretch here, just being ready to go come playoff time? It really feels like it's going to be Toronto, Winnipeg, Edmonton. It's not necessarily in that order as the top three. Not that I want to take anything away from Montreal because they're a good hockey team. I think finishing first matters. I do. I think that 2-3 that series is going to be a dogfight, but again, if you get in, you don't know what you're going to get, You're going right? to get Montreal no matter what if you finish first. And they're all going to be good, though. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of people commenting. We've got to send a shout-out to Mike Abu Meshwick, our good friend Mike, 10-year CFL or Grey Cup champion, panelist here, who is in Toronto, and uh, he's already said it. He's put it on Facebook, so it's not a secret. He's there to donate a kidney. So way to go, Abu. Awesome. Um, a lot of people just wishing him well. He's in the hospital all week. A lot of us don't understand how this works probably a good thing mm -hmm. and i think the procedure is thursday so we're saying abu strong here on the program uh, i just want to point out canada's team the vegas golden knights have won six in a row and they're tied <laughs> rich look at the look <laughs> canada's team they are tied with colorado for the most points in the national hockey league just putting it out there and i'll say this it's marlowe monday tonight patty marlowe of aneroid saskatchewan will play game number 1768 breaking gordy howe's record and i'll just say this has been rattling around in my cranium people say um yeah but gordy played another however m many more in the wha a thousand hey it's pro hockey but how come in the nfl they don't acknowledge cfl stats for combined Guys that played in both leagues, like Flutie's, for instance. Yeah. They don't acknowledge that. No, they don't. And pro hockey in the American League, too. We're not counting those games. I mean, it's the no. National Hockey League, right? It's a big deal. And, and, I mean, I wasn't around for the WHA days, so I can't compare that. But, no. This I'm is just a, saying. It's a big deal. Don't take anything away from Patty. It's a huge deal. Huge. Number one. Gordy had number one in both, right, for the longest time. Yeah. So, way to go, Patty Marlowe. And I think the coolest thing is both those guys our Saskatchewan guys. Uh, point two of the quick six show topics today is, hey, I misquoted myself. For the football people that are watching, um, when I, the clip that went up yesterday from our content creator, Nelson Vo, where I said it feels like the CFL is trying to distract us with the global draft and the Canadian draft, I misquoted myself. And I guess I got to be careful now when we're on national television, every little thing you say touches off a firestorm. And it isn't what I meant. I was explaining it to you last night in the press box. What I meant was they're bringing out little appetizers, like a little shrimp, you know, and a little escargot. And I'm like, get out of it. I want the steak. So I'm trying to appease you with littler things when the bigger story is this. Yeah. So a distraction would be like what my mom said when on the farm when she was making supper for the farmhands at seeding her harvest. The guys would come in for supper, and if it was, she didn't have it ready, she would set the table. And they would all think that it was coming. She was distracting them. And, and it worked. Yeah. Until she had supper ready. It's a little different. I don't think the CFL is trying to distract us with anything, but they're giving us little appetizers, and it's not filling our appetite. But then you keep eating and keep drinking all these little things, and eventually when they say, oh, the steak's not coming, you've already had enough. You're like, well, I'm kind of full anyway, and it's already November. It's time to go do something else. Like, I already got to go. So maybe that's the hope, but yeah, I get it. Are we saying the steak's coming or not coming? I guess is the bottom line on this. I'm still, you st I still want the steak, so. Yeah, so as you're long waiting. As you want it, I'm optimistic that it's coming. I'll sit at the table. You're willing wait. to wait, okay? Oh, for sure. 
We we'll don't do, really have a choice. We'll sit here and visit. We got good company. I'm not yeah. at the table by myself. We, we, we don't really have a choice. But I guess the point is I saw this a lot on the weekend from from Twitter, from people. Like, I'm really getting worried about the CFL season. I'm worried about this. Well, the federal budget's coming down, what, today? And the CFL, I guess their decision will be hinged somewhat to the federal budget. So we'll see where it goes. I guess my point is I misquoted myself. CFL is not trying to distract us. They're just trying to tease us with appetizers. Then it's not filling our hunger. Mm -hmm. uh, point three, I've split it. Number, the first part, the new Cincinnati Bengals uniforms. Can you put it up, guys? Because Cincinnati ESPN Radio, they say Mo Egger, our good friend, said, I just want to know what Rod thinks about this. So you know the story between Mo Egger and I with Cincinnati uh, what is it, 1310 radio there? We had a little bit of a rivalry. Um, I don't know about those Bengals jerseys. I said to Mo, did, did they change them at all? It's not a huge. And by the way, they're watching us on Buckeye Cable down there on Game Plus TV all through the Cincinnati area. I'm not going to poo-poo it, but how about winning some games and making the playoffs? Yeah. I'm not like, going down. The, it's okay. It's a jersey. It's they, okay. I'd like to see the orange one a little bit more full. Um, it looks to me, I just see it. I see Denver Broncos. Um, oh yeah, a little bit too orange. Doesn't it clashes with the helmet a little bit? The white I kind of like. I, I like the black. I don't. I don't think they're that bad. They're, they're not good. bad. It's but it's again, it's the players in the jerseys that yeah. matter. So yeah, cool. Run out and get your Bengals jersey. I'm splitting that with a late add-on. Russ Jackson, the greatest Canadian quarterback ever in the history of the CFL. Did you see his quote from Three Down? I did. He told John Hodge that his heart sank when he heard that there was a merger. To potentially happening between the CFL and the XFL. And I guess this kind of dawned on me last week. And I, because I'm so a forward thinker, I'm not a backward thinker. So as far as the CFL three down Canadian game, it kind of took for Russ Jackson to say it versus some of these other people in the CFL where it's really upsetting where he could see this Canadian game die. Well, talking with the, with the governing bodies of junior football in this country, university football in this country, Canadian football is not going to die. But the CFL way of life may. And when Russ says it, it kind of hits home a little more, mm -hmm. right? So I'm like, oh, okay, okay. Well, so what? I think we've said this. Would you want to keep banging your head against the wall against a league that's hand to mouth and has been for 100 years or merge with an American league, more people, more population, more players, more prosperous? I'm still not changing my mind, but what Russ said just kind of brought it home to me a little more. Fair? Yeah. No, it, it just brings brings to light the seriousness of this and what it means mm -hmm. and how people are going to be affected by this and, you know, really hits home with the seriousness uh, of the situation that the CFL is in and what we stand to lose if we move this way. But does it mean that we don't need to move in that direction? Doesn't mean we have to, but... Even if we do, it just kind of brings to light, look at, this isn't a small thing that's happening right now. It's no small thing. Well, and is it happening at all? I mean, back to this, you know, you see people are very upset saying, we, if this is going on and being talked about behind closed doors and it's a secret to everybody, this is wrong. That's from former uh, chairman in the Canadian Football League, that the fans and the media and certainly the players should be kept abreast of what's going on behind closed doors in the CFL. But I'm kind of at a point now where, it's not going to happen. I'm tired of arguing, you know, and when people say, oh, I'm tired of this XFL thing, I feel like it is just beginning, but I'm certainly tired of arguing. I'm going to stop here and drop anchor for a second on some of these comments. Jeff, the Stamps fan regarding the Bengals jerseys says it looks like they're old unis. Okay, that's what I thought. <laughs> that's why I tweeted it. Well, I think we need a side by side. It's I know. like spot the differences. I tweeted it at Mo Egger. I'm like, did they change? Uh, whatever. Good. Way to go, Bengals. As Jeff in Winnipeg says, meh, Bengals still going to suck. <laughs> Monty in Saskatoon with the reasoning of everybody. Who cares? It's not the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> it's all that matters. Uh, Jeff, the Stampeders fan, says, I wonder what in the federal budget would have the CFL waiting just from what I've read on the weekend, and most of it comes from three down. And Steve Simmons, of course, got a lot of play with his column in the Toronto Sun on the weekend that they're waiting to see where the money is going to be spent by the federal government. That's what budgets do. And from there, I guess, I, I get what you're saying, Jeff. I don't really necessarily understand it either. Do you want to take that question? Why would the CFL be waiting on the federal government when they've been told no twice yeah. to a no-interest loan? Well, I think you still hold out hope, right, that uh, – 
that they might show up with a line item in there for the CFL. But you also look at the other government programs. We saw in the Winnipeg Blue Bombers books, right, I believe it was $3 million in federal assistance that they accessed through the wage subsidy, right, to, to keep things going. So what other things are going to be in the budget that might help the league that they can access creatively? It won't look like here's on line 655, $30 million for the CFL to distribute and use at their whim. It's these programs and these other, you know, funding models. You know, the wage subsidy has been extended now a little bit longer, so that will help. Um, maybe they're looking for something like that. I'm looking for a lot of, uh, sorry, I'm looking at a lot of comments. They're all over the place. This is what we do here in the warm-up, which is brought to you by the Four Seasons Sports Palace. Order a fabulous Four Seasons pizza and your favorite beverage for takeout and delivery. One-stop shopping. Call or order online. That's Four Seasons Sports Palace. From Norway, Trent's watching. He says, Norway calling. Vancouver beats the Leafs after the corona situation. Is this the annual folding for Toronto? Wouldn't that be something? Wouldn't that How be? How about that? How about Campbell that? needs to up his game for the Leafs. Uh, Alex Smith retires from the NFL just before you went to air, according to TSN.ca. And good luck to Abu with his Oregon gift. May Marlowe get the NHL games record. Well done. Stay well, everybody. Just Trent checking in from Norway. Thank you, Trent. I appreciate that. Uh, somebody was asking here if the CBC should go back to, sorry, if the CFL should go back to CBC and the CBC Gem app. They got to fold first before that happens, and I don't know if that's going to happen. I know this. The CEBL, which we're following closely, they had their draft last week. I put it in my 10 things column. The Saskatchewan Rattlers had the number one overall pick, and they took Nervin's Demos Thines, a six foot three guard from Bishop's University. Um, I'm following the league that's doing great things. I kind of look at it like the beer industry. You got Budweiser and Labatt up here, just statistically in terms of stale sales. You got Molson in the middle, and you got all these little craft beers coming up from underneath. The CEBL is like a craft beer. The NLL, in a way, is a craft. It's smaller, right? Yeah. You got the NFL is the big Budweiser, and it's squeezing the middle ones, right? Right. If, if Molson's in the middle, but I think if you follow the mergers of Coors Light and Molson and all these companies, it's just you get the big one, the, the smaller ones, and that's squeezing the middle class. And is the CFL not in the middle class? I would think so. That's how it feels to me. It's bigger than the little ones, and it's smaller than the big ones. Yeah, like they're not the craft beer, but they're not the juggernaut either, the behemoth. So they are in the yeah. middle. And, you know, the craft beer is eclectic, and that's what everybody wants to be a fan of. But yet tried and true is what's at the top, and you kind of get lost in the middle. Yeah, I agree with that. I want to read this comment from Trent in uh, Toronto from Sober Athletic where, shoot, here he goes. I respect Patrick Marlowe, and he totally deserves the recognition as all-time NHL games leader. But I feel sad Gordie Howe loses this record to a guy who played a softer game, didn't miss much time due to injuries, and the 1,000 games Gordie has in the WHA does mean something to me. I still tip my hat to Patrick, but my old crusty heart is still with Mr. Hockey. That's totally fine. Totally makes sense to me, doesn't it, to you? For sure. Love whoever you want, but we know Patty Marlowe personally. Love him. He's from here. Well, by the way, so is Gordy. Love whoever you want. It's a free country. But hats off to Marlowe Monday, as Patty does it tonight in Las Vegas. Um, Monty uh, in Saskatoon says, how many CEBL games are you going to go to this season? All of them. Hopefully all of them. <laughs> yeah. All of them. They're playing June 7th, baby. The Saskatchewan Rattlers versus the league champion Edmonton Stingers in Sass Health Center. We're going to be there or be square. Uh, last four, Dub Hub. We did uh, the game last night. The Pats beat the Prince Albert Raiders 4 3. First win for the Pats in the post Connor Bedard era. Hell of a game. It was the Golden Corral of hockey games. It had a little bit of everything. Did it ever? It had fights. It had goals. It had injuries. Mm -hmm. Old time hockey last night in the Dub Hub. Another doubleheader today. Uh, the Jays. Split with Kansas City. How come the Jays just can't get ahead in the American League East? They split with the Royals. They won the series against the Yankees, and they're still third in the AL East. I know. But, they, hey, wait till George Springer comes. That's the saving grace, right? And then they're going to win the World Series. And then, uh, point six, other weekend sports notes. I just want to mention the Raps beat Oklahoma City Thunder. Watch out for the Raptors, by the way. They're coming. Stewart Sink won the RBC Heritage. It was a good sports weekend. Very good. Dupes, we'll see you a little later. See you next hour. I think a good uh, face-off later on might be this. If the CFL-XFL merges, does Canadian 
football die. Ooh, you think about that. I will. Rich Sutter in the bunker next. It's our Monday morning coffee get-together uh, for Caliber Coffee. You're watching the RP Show on Game Plus TV Network, YouTube and Facebook Live, and 24-hour sports talk for Suds Full Service Car Wash at rodpeterson.com. Listen live. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You got to subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. If you could spend less time in the field, more time with your family, and make more money at the same time, would you do it? Verges Farm Operations Planning Technology eliminates unnecessary turns, improves infield communication, application accuracy, and reduces deadheading. Finish fields faster, burn less fuel, and use fewer inputs, all in one simple-to-use, web-based solution. Do more of what you want, when you want, with the people you love by subscribing to Launchpad by Verge today. Direct West has been the bridge for me, from not dealing with social media or digital presence to having a presence, you have to take the leap of faith, so to say, and I'm glad we have. Direct West has helped us out immensely to get our presence online as far as digitally and also with the social media page. To see the results is just, uh, just puts a smile on your face. <laughs> Capital GMC is your used car destination. We're overstocked and priced to move, so shop online or in-store to get the best deal on any one of our massive selection of certified pre-owned vehicles. Every certified vehicle includes the balance of manufacturer's warranty, 150 plus point inspection, roadside assistance and certified exchange privilege. So save the depreciation and buy pre-owned. Capital GMC is your used car destination at the corner of Rochdale and Pasqua in Regina. Bronco Plumbing and Heating. Proudly serving Regina and surrounding areas since 1978, we are excited to announce the new Bryant Furnace Trade and Allowance Program. If you have a working Bryant Furnace, 15 years old or less, you may be eligible to receive a new furnace at a discounted rate. If you'd like to take advantage of the Bryant Trade and Program or to hear how we can help improve your home, give us a call today at 306-781-2090. Introducing Original 16 Hard Seltzer. The refreshing taste of lemon and Saskatoon berry with vodka made in Saskatchewan. New Hard Seltzers from Original 16. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show. Hey, honey, can you get one of the kids to show me how this Twitter thing works? Honey, I need to get on Instagram. Time for more of the Rod Peterson Show. All right, welcome, everybody. Uh, I got to uh, apologize to Troy. I'm sorry, Troy, in Toronto from Sober Athletic Wear. He's got my name wrong. I thought we were friends. We only got 800 messages coming in here, Troy. I'm sorry. And I'm sweating under these lights. But anyways, we get a lot of comments to get to and i'll just say mike blackbird in toronto says what's happened to the nll where are they they have mothballed basically until late next fall and so they'll be fine but everybody's doing their own thing in the national lacrosse league okay we're talking hockey now rich sutter joins us in the bunker 874 nhl games 149 goals 1411 penalty minutes how you doing richie i'm great how are you good great to be here welcome to 
the WHL Hub Center. Finally. Yeah, have you had fun here watching hockey? It's been great. It's been a real good experience. Um, you know, things that I wanted to do and was hoping to see uh, has, has happened the last few days, and hopefully get another good day. If, if today was anywhere as good as yesterday, we've had a good day. Yeah, no kidding. Doubleheader yesterday, great hockey. Tonight it's Winnipeg versus Swift Current and then PA versus Moose Jaw. We're going to talk NHL junior everything with rich by the way scout pro scout for the columbus blue jackets mm -hmm. can i just say that you want to do um recognize patrick marlow well, you know here's a guy that you know and i watched him when he was a 16 year old in the washington hockey league final um this guy carried his hockey team on his back as a 16 year old and he was a big strong kid that could fly then and i'm just so proud of this kid uh good farm boy we know what farm boys are all about and and uh, just the career he's had, I think, um, you know, Patty, I just want to recognize you today. Just that how, how, what a wonderful career you've had. How much fun it's been watching you, uh, quietly cheering you on. Um, your epitome of a, what a real athlete, a strong, true professional athlete's all about. Your, your, your commitment to excellence, your commitment to uh, being just not a great hockey player, but a great person. Uh, Someone who's represented uh, San Jose so well. Um, great family guy. Um, so congratulations to you and hope that uh, hey, you skate well enough to play another year so don't think about hanging them up yet. Yeah, no kidding. And they're in Vegas tonight taking on the Golden Knights. And unfortunately, the Marlows won't be in attendance because of COVID stuff. They'll be watching on television. But just one more on Marlow. How about Troy in Toronto's comment that Gordy did it in a tougher era, his uh, 1700 and 86 games well you know i would say yes and no to that you play you know uh, today's game is just you know, in the last on a year-to-year -year basis it's just it's, it's transformed so much rod the speed the skill the the pace uh you know to really truly appreciate what these guys do and how fast they do it at the pace they do it at you know it's even it's been mind-boggling to me at times and to to get down to ice level to really really appreciate other than what you see up top 120 130 nights a year uh, what these guys do it and how they do it on a day-to-day -day basis look it's a grind you know you can't get to where you're at without being committed and putting your body through a lot of stuff and uh you know he's done that so you know yeah it's great what gordy's done you know knowing that wonderful man for a few years before he passed and his family and their commitment to uh, how they are today and what well, Patty's done the same so just in a different area and I think it's been it's certainly been no easier and it's been every bit as hard as far as I'm concerned uh Bill Lothian's watching he says absolutely rich met Pat's dad in Swift Current while on a scouting trip a gem of a guy Apple doesn't fall far from the tree congrats from a oh. Cinnaboya um Monty says watching in Saskatoon. Rich is looking great. You know, I said that when you jumped out of the truck at the lake the other day. What are you doing right? Exercising, eh? No, not... Well, I mean, you try to. I mean, wintertime is not the greatest time to exercise. True. It. My wife, Ron, is awesome. She does... Uh, you know, she, she loves her yoga. She loves getting outside, walking. Um, we, you know, one thing that's you know, we've been allowed to do with this... You know, what we've dealt with for the last 14 months is that uh, we've been able to spend a lot of time together, but able to get outside and uh we love the mountains uh you know we weren't able to get to our home in montana this past year uh so we've taken advantage of the of the rockies in canada and to get outside and a lot of hikes uh a lot of cycling um outdoor cycling for me personally and i think it's really helped me and you know i got to get back on that on that on that uh training regimen again here pretty soon now the weather's finally warmed up and you get back outside and do a lot of things that so you won't find me inside too much unless i'm watching hockey to be quite frank right well i'm sure you yeah. never get tired of the compliments so this is the easy part for me rich is fine with answering questions from the viewers i know he are so i'm gonna let you folks take over you people can take over watching and the prairie mobile text line is open 306-840-8777 prairie mobile is your authorized sask tell mobility dealer Johnny Schmidt's a big Habs fan, Rich, and apologies for the way he says this, but he says, Rich, if you spoke to Daryl about the shames and what they need to do to get into the playoffs, he's talking about the Flames, of course. What would you say? You only talked to Daryl once? 
since he took over there? I don't need to talk to Daryl, quite frankly. <laughs> you know, Daryl's got bigger fish to fry and lots going on with this group. Look, um, they are what they are today. They know what they are and where they are. Uh, hopefully they can get some more answers of where they feel they're going to be going here in the next, you know, two, three weeks. And, uh, um, look, uh, there's teams uh, around the league. We've all got problems, you know, to some degree in, in how we go about how we do our business. So, uh, yes, there will be some – I imagine there will be some changes there, but that's not for me to really – have my input on because that's not my organization. Yeah. Well, here's another one. You you chimed in on our poll question today for Capital Auto Mall Universal Collision Center. Who's the most underrated player in the National Hockey League? You came up with some of these. Nikolai Ehlers, Alex Barkov, Bo Horvat, or Sebastian Aho. And on Twitter right now, Nick Ehlers is leading with 34%. On Facebook, right in front of you, Ehlers is leading there, correct? Yes. But it's pretty split. Did we get the four right ones? What do you think? Well, I think there's a there's a lot of players actually, Rod, you know, I mean, from the outside viewer. But for me, myself, uh, you know, when you're kind of in, in, the, in the trenches and see what's going on with all these teams and how they play and you see a lot of them consistently, um, you know, I watch hockey pretty much 24-7. And, um uh, Look, there's a lot of players that a lot of people don't really know about. You just you see the names and they're not recognizable because they're in the Carolinas, they're in other markets of the world that we don't get that type of uh, news from those areas. But I think, you know, um, for me personally, uh, there's not a lot of underage players because you know who the good players are on every team. But I think from a fan standpoint, there's a lot of underrated players. Just simply think more than anything because we don't hear about them up here. Mm -hmm. Well, if there was a fifth it would have been probably Ryan Nugent Hopkins. We debated that a little bit. And you said he could play on your team any day. Well, I mean, this, I mean, we all know, I mean, everyone knows about Ryan Nugent Hopkins. I mean, he's a Western Canadian kid. He played in the Western Hockey League. He's played in Edmonton for his whole career. Um, he's had a great career there. Um, you know, so for me, he's not really an underrated player because I know what he is. Well, and, and it's not a bad segue there with Red Deer. We all saw him go number one overall to the Rebels. Some go to the Oilers. And yeah. even the buzz in the rink yesterday at the Dub Hub was about Brent stepping down in Red Deer. And the guys are saying, how is Brent? What's the deal? What can you tell us about Brent? Uh, handing the reins over to nephew Sean. Well, Brent, Brent's, you know, he's doing fine. Um, you know, comes a point, you know, in your, in your career, you know, um, you know, Brent's not a string chicken anymore. And, and even though you might want to think that, but you know he's got, you know he's he's got a life to live too, right? And and he 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 needs to enjoy it. He needs to have his health and to be able to enjoy it. And uh, look, when you're when you're an owner of, of a Western Hockey League team and a single owner as him and Connie are, uh, you know, with no outside partners, uh, and what's gone on in the hockey world the last few months, there's a lot of stress that goes on when you know, like there's there's bills to be paid and a lot of things that have to happen and 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 uh plus he's running a big farm they do so they've got a lot on their plate and i think it's good for brent to, to probably take a step back now uh and watch what his team has got here in the next two three weeks to finish out the season uh and for sean to to probably get behind the bench and see what he's got there as well so they can get their heads together and 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 you know their knowledge and hopefully a skill set to build it you know, take a step forward with what they have to do this summer. And, and I think it's it's a good move by Brent at this point. Um, you know, and, and it's, you know, it is a bit of a kick in the stomach because you got to make a decision at some point, right, to take a step back, whether uh, it's now or later. But uh, I think in the long run, Brent's knowledgeable enough. He's got good people around him. Uh, he will get the right people in place uh, in due time here. And hopefully the Rebels will take that step forward. Merrick's the brains behind the operation, let's be honest. Well, that's what he says, yes. So, uh, so um, you know, and Brent, <laughs> if we believe that. <laughs> and look, Merrick's done a heck of a job. There's no doubt. And, 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 and Merrick's got aspirations, too. And uh, quite frankly, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised that, you know, some of these, uh, some NHL teams haven't brought him on board. I was kind of hoping that maybe a team like Seattle would, would find a fit for, for, a get, for a guy like Merrick. I think Merrick's a very talented, wise uh smart individual and i think he wherever he goes he will be an asset to uh to an organization well i know that he does a great job in red deer and by the way sean dufour is watching 
WHL linesman says, I love that Daryl was the coach for Marlowe's very first NHL game. That's pretty cool, too. And speaking of, I mean, it's hockey's first family. We say it all the time with the Sutters. You can't throw a stone without it affecting a team that's got a Sutter on it. And before we talk about Brandon and the Canucks, just on Red Deer, like Brent's holding on to that team forever, I would think. I mean, I would think in Red Deer, they love the fact that a Sutter owns the Rebels. Well, you know, they've done a terrific job there. Uh, the, Brent and Connie are very community-minded people. Um, they're involved in the community. Um, and, and they've kept busy there for years and, and, and very active. So, you know, I don't know where Brent's thinking. or it's uh, We don't really talk about that stuff too much. But obviously, I would believe that there's there's been some people probably made some calls over the last few years wanting to know if he, you know, kicking tires about where his thoughts are about owning the club moving forward. And uh, look, uh, it's in a great uh, area. Um, it's a terrific building. Brent Connie have spent a lot of money uh, investing into that building, uh, what's inside the guts of that building, and the, uh, the, just the whole uh, makeup for what these kids are offered on a day-to-day -day basis, and the facilities uh, speak for themselves at a pro level. Um, so, uh, look, it's one of the top and best places to live uh, and to play hockey. So it, it's a great spot, and, uh, you know, it's a team that uh, will continue to be highly regarded in the Western Hockey League and, and spit out players, which is what they're all about. What a home run, though. Central Alberta for the Western Hockey League. There's no doubt. Yeah. Right? And I just can't imagine anybody but a Sutter owning the Red Deer Rebels. Um, should we take a break, guys, or fire one more, Richie? Okay, we're going to take a break, come back with a sports update. We're going to talk about the Vancouver Canucks and them coming back and playing last night and winning. And he's got a nephew on the team from Cody Watching on YouTube, can you put this up on the screen, guys? From Cody Fajardo's biggest fan. Watching on YouTube, I love you, Rich Sutter. <laughs> Looking at a lot of fans here today, Richie. No shock. So we'll be right back and take more of your NHL questions with Rich Sutter. It's a Monday morning get-together. Thanks for joining us on Game Plus TV, YouTube and Facebook Live, and 24-hour sports talk for Suds Full Service Car Wash at rodpeterson.com. Listen live. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. BDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Don't rack your brain trying to source the equipment and materials you need for your business. Rockstar can operate your entire supply chain, from PO creation to expediting your shipments, all from our office. Leverage the buying power of the Rockstar Buying Group to not only save money and time, but also the headache. From gloves to glue, we can provide it for you. Find out more at rockstar.com. At Prairie Mobile, you can get the phone you want when you want. All smartphones are $0 every day. With convenient locations across Saskatchewan, Prairie Mobile, your Sastel authorized dealer, has you covered. Visit us online at prairiemobile.com. We started Suds Car Wash in 2003. There's a bit of us in every part of the business. I've been working here since I was about 10 years old. Hard to believe it's been 12 years since. Working with my family has been great. My mom and dad have taught us the importance of hard work. I've been here since I was 10 years old and my dad has taught me a lot about quality work. From all of us at Suds Car Wash, we make your car shine.
Direct West provides us with stats and analytics, and, and it's amazing for us to look and see that, you know, each year we're 10 to 20 percent higher on our Google Leads. It's great to see the success that our, our locations are having. The Direct West app gives us an opportunity to be in one place for people to find uh, any of our locations or our commodities. Without Direct West, we would have to be in multiple digital places. I would recommend Direct West. They're great to work with. IKS Live. IKS Live. Western Canada's premier production services company. LED. LED sign rental. Video. Video production. Event, event management. Look no further than IKS Live. Visit our website. IKS Live. Always the best seat in the house. IKS Live. Did you know you can catch all the best moments from the show on all our social media platforms? Now, back to the studio with Rob. Welcome back, everybody. More with uh, Rich Sutter coming up. But first, a sports update. The Toronto Maple Leafs are hoping forward Zach Hyman is not seriously injured. He left Sunday night's game against the Canucks after a knee-on-knee -knee collision with Vancouver defenseman Alex Hedler. Toronto went on to lose 3-2 in overtime. Brendan Botcher beat Kevin Cooey 6-2 in another big All-Alberta game on Sunday to book a spot in the men's final of the Humpty's Champions Cup today. Botcher also knocked off Cooey in the same venue earlier this year to win the Briar. Meanwhile, Ottawa's Rachel Homan secured a berth in today's women's championship. Three Montrealers featured in an NBA game last night between the Raptors and Oklahoma City Thunder. Montreal's Chris Boucher had 31 points for the Raptors and new teammate Kahem Birch added seven. The third Montrealer was the Thunder's Lugens Dort. Toronto won 112-106. Alex Bowman passed Denny Hamlin on a restart with 10 laps to go and drove away at Richmond Raceway for his third career victory in the NASCAR Cup Series. That went down on Sunday. <clears throat> Bowman produced a stunning conclusion to a race that Hamlin had dominated along with Martin Truex Jr. and Joey Logano. With all eyes on Hamlin and Logago on the restart, Bowman ducked inside Hamlin, easily gained the spot, held it to the finish, became the eighth winner in the nine cup races this season. Told you I was into NASCAR this year. This sports update for the Tap Brew House and Liquor Store and for Red Bull Canada. Red Bull gives you wings. We already had the uh, Flames question, Sheldon. You obviously logged in, so rewind on that. Um, the guy wrote in here, Rich, about the Jets. It's James, here it is. James in Borden, Manitoba says the Jets face the Leafs twice this week. They're four points back. Maybe by next Monday, the Jets are tied for first. Please, hockey gods. My question to you is, how important is it to finish first in this country? I don't know if it's that important, quite frankly. You know, these teams are so good, and, and they're able to win in any building in the league, any building in Canada, for that matter, at this point. And uh, the, I think the biggest thing is you want to go in playing as well as you can possibly be, and that's the biggest thing. And I think if you ask any coach, they're going to say the same thing, is that, you, you need your guys playing well at the right time and you need your goaltending playing well at the right time and biggest thing is I think you look at that right now uh, yeah those are big games for the Jets they're big games for the Leafs that are kind of scuffling a little bit right now too so uh, you know the Jets not having Blake Wheeler is a big hole and uh, you know how long is he going to be out is it has to be a real concern there uh, you know, and now and then now you wait and sit and see what the next two, three days bring about on Zach Hyman. So that's a big hole to fill, especially that, you know, you're not just going out and plucking a guy off someone else's roster at this time of the year because that's not happening because it's not, you know, the trade deadline has passed. So, you know, uh, I think you can win in any building. It, you know, the game is, the, the, the margin of error is so slim rod, the, the parity is so strong. Uh, look, it's right there for all these teams. Uh, I think, again, it comes down to health, who's on a roll, and goaltending. Uh, I'm just going to sprinkle in comments as we go here. Dan Croft's uh, watching. Good friend of mine, Croft. He says, love the NASCAR updates. Well, I've been, you've been trying to get me into it for years, Crofty. I'm into it now. As I said to Rich, when it comes to racing, I enjoy the smell of burnt fuel better than manure. So I'll stick to <laughs> auto racing over horse racing. That's just me. 
Uh, you don't mind me firing all these rapid fire no, questions no, that you do. No. So I read a story somewhere that your nephew Brandon and his whole family was pretty severely affected by COVID in the last two weeks. So what's your take on them coming back to play and how it ravaged the team? You know, we were very we were very concerned for Brandon and Gazelle and the kids. Uh, you know, especially when it happens to little ones, because um, you don't really hear that much about that. And uh, but with the variant, um, obviously that's a different question. And and with with Gazelle, with them expecting their third little one um, in August, yeah, it's it was a big concern. But uh, thank God they've managed to pull through it. Uh, thank God for the whole organization and and the players and their families. It's you know it's just not a it's not a hockey story anymore. It's a it's a story that you worry about. You know, you know, you worry about the families and and the well-being and and, and the, you know, especially if there's any long-term effects on the little ones and um, they've managed to pull out of this and and you know I'm sure glad that that Miller did what he did a few days ago. I think it was the right thing. Um, it bought them some more time, which I think was badly needed. Uh, and who cares about rescheduling games and making this has to last a little bit longer to get through this. But in terms of the schedule, I think the biggest thing, Rod, though, is that it bought them much needed time uh, because you can't expect, I don't care how elite these athletes are, you can't expect them to, to come in and play on the timelines that were initially given to them and expect them to perform without worrying about long-term effects or their own health and well-being. Well, I think it's important for people to know and you and I talk a lot, at least once a week. You've been always extremely COVID conscious. You have your vaccination shot, your first, right? Yes, but I'm still, uh, you know, one of the things I promised myself from day one is that, um, yeah, I miss my travel. I miss my responsibilities, what I do with my organization. I feel like, you know, it feels like at home and doing things on a daily basis, I've kept as busy and probably more busy in some ways. But at the end of the day, my concern from day one was was staying clear of this, mm -hmm. staying healthy uh, for the well-being of my own family uh, and my own health. And um, knock on wood that we've managed to get through it so far. And uh, yeah, just uh, as our family have managed to get through it too as well, with the exception of Brown and his, his family. Well, but I think that's the point. I've had my shot. You've had your shot. I can't wait for my second. And you haven't had your second I, I believe. no hopefully in a couple of weeks if right I, if i can get somewhere to get it yeah but i'm just saying to the non-sports crowd that are up i saw what was saying being said about me on the weekend rod doesn't care about COVID. all he wants is sports i'm like no if we can play sports safely i just don't want everything shut down like for instance in the dub hub you've been in it the last four days i've had people say to me this is the safest place on the prairies right and you went through yeah. your checks on stuff so it's like if we can do it safe i don't want to get it but I don't think no. we should shut down all sports either. Why can't people get their head around that? Well, it's honestly, Rod, it's been very frustrating as for me individually, and I know my opinion doesn't count. But I'm just going to say that, look, we've, we've put ourselves in some very brutal spots as a country and, and as people, and I don't get it why people don't understand. And they can rip whoever all they want that think that I'm wrong. But at the end of the day, you know, we, we have to do what's right. And, and, and I don't think what's right is by not listening. What's right is by doing the right things that's gonna help us chase this thing out of here. Uh, and praying that some people get their act together in terms of our vaccines for our country because um, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of under delivering going on as far as I'm concerned about where we're at with this and the timelines of where we should be at compared to where we said we were gonna be at four or five months ago. And People made fun of what was going on south of the board and how terrible it was, but, you know, yeah, population-wise, they were in tough shape, but you look at, you know, you can get a vaccine anywhere down there. And yeah. and here, I mean, we're, we're fighting just to, to get people ones and, and, and quit throwing them away. Let's start using them, putting them in people's arms because this is what it's all about and is getting our, getting our people taken care of not just the first shot, but the second shot. Right. I just wanted to get that out there and clarify your stance is the same yeah. as my stance. It, it's, right? it's, it's concerning. There's no yeah. doubt on a daily basis. It, but does, uh, it does bother you because we need to get our people taken care of. All of your questions for which when we come back, it's his last segment with us because he's got some hockey stuff to do after this. By the way, Troy in Toronto says, Rich is a great guest enjoying his commentary. That's why we got him in here. And if you got questions... 
Let us know. We'll fire them at them right after this break. You're watching the RP Show. Monday morning coffee get together for Caliber Coffee. You're watching on Game Plus TV, YouTube and Facebook Live, and 24-hour sports talk for Suds Full Service Car Wash at rodpeterson.com. Listen live. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You got to subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. Capital GMC is your used car destination. We're overstocked and priced to move. So shop online or in-store to get the best deal on any one of our massive selection of certified pre-owned vehicles. Every certified vehicle includes the balance of manufacturer's warranty, 150 plus point inspection, roadside assistance and certified exchange privilege. So save the depreciation and buy pre-owned. Capital GMC is your used car destination at the corner of Rochdale and Pasqua in Regina. Introducing Original 16 Hard Seltzer. The refreshing taste of delicious peach with vodka made in Saskatchewan. New Hard Seltzers from Original 16. People donate blood for moments like this. But there are lots of reasons why Canada's lifeline needs donors every day. Like the fact that someone with leukemia can eat up to eight units of blood a week. Or that donated blood lasts no longer than 42 days. Or to help new moms and babies, like Henry. There's lots of reasons to donate blood. That's why we need donors every day. The need for blood is constant. Join Toyota and our Toyota dealers in supporting Canada's lifeline. If you could spend less time in the field, more time with your family, and make more money at the same time, would you do it? Verge's farm operations planning technology eliminates unnecessary turns, improves in-field communication, application accuracy, and reduces deadheading. Finish fields faster, burn less fuel, and use fewer inputs, all in one simple-to-use, web-based solution. Do more of what you want, when you want, with the people you love by subscribing to Launchpad by Verge today. Some of the challenges we face with the CT technology that we have today is some of the deficiencies in around integration with some of our other systems. The addition of, of two new 40 simulators uh, within the programming of the Saskatchewan Cancer Agency is, is going to have significant impact on, on you know, the care we provide to the people of Saskatchewan. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop, staffed by PGA of Canada professionals, is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. Send us your opinions now. We won't victimize you unless you really deserve it. Now back to your host, Rod Peterson. Welcome back to the RP Show, everybody. Last segment with Rich Sutter, and we got questions for him. James and Ford, Manitoba. Great interview. The Sutters, Sutters are not known for loving the media, but I can't. I can see that he respects Rod. It's like watching old friends. I remember the first time I met him in the lobby of the Ramada in Lethbridge. You came down for breakfast with Rich Preston. I don't know if you remember that day I with do. the Pats. I do. We've been friends ever since. Um, well, Dean Tix is watching it outside Green Bay, Wisconsin. He says, what is Rich's take on the BC Hockey League possibly becoming involved with the US, USHL? He's a fan of the Green Bay. It's the blizzard, right? Gamblers. Gamblers? Gamblers. Oh, so you know all about it. Of course I do. What do you think about the BCHL move? Well, I think right now it's just, you know, until you actually see it happen, it's, 
there's rumors, but maybe where there's rumors, there's smoke, there's fire. But I think it's just not the BCHL, quite frankly, Rod. I'm hearing real stories about some of the AJHL teams as well, and, and uh, that has been going on for more than 20 two, years. Yeah, but but more real than anything lately in the last few weeks. So, uh, yeah, I don't think it's something the Kane, you know, the Canadian hockey wants to deal with. Quite frankly, they don't. They want to be losing teams out of their leagues and going elsewhere. But uh, who knows where this is going? Obviously, someone has done their homework and someone has done some planning. So it wasn't like this popped up overnight. Some junior A leagues feel incredibly restricted by Hockey Canada, and obviously BCHL is one of them. That's why they want to break off on their own. So it's a bigger story than we have time for here. I'd say for sure. For sure. Um, the people, a lot of the viewers were asking your thoughts on uh, if the Columbus Blue Jackets are going to be acquiring a center to play with line A. What is the future <laughs> looking like there? Because you talked about it at the trade deadline, and I don't think you well, guys got anybody. Look, every team needs a number one center, right? Some teams have one, some teams have two. And uh, we, at this point, yeah, we, our goal is to get better. Our goal is to find that center. Uh, we believe that we will. Um, I also believe that in this league, the way the league is nowadays, uh, to have a number one center, and you know, and you know, Edmonton was fortunate to get, you know, their guys um, through the draft and and through the tough times they had preceding drafts that allowed them to get themselves in positions to have those guys. Uh, I also believe that you're in a league today that you know, if you can have even two real good number two type guys. Uh, it still makes you a strong hockey club. I think the biggest thing is if you got your wingers that are talented, skilled uh, players that can explode and score goals for you, your job is to get them a centerman that can get them the puck. And uh, I think that's every team's goal. And and uh, I don't think a centerman's going to fall in their lap right now. So it's going to take some work. It's going to take some uh, some uh, effort and some great thoughts about how we're going to pull this off. But I really believe with our group of people that we're going to be able to get that guy uh, moving forward for next fall. Jeff in Winnipeg says, love the Sutters. They don't back down and not afraid to say it like it is. And in that vein, Rich, we got to be out by 56-ish. So i got two quick questions for you. Johnny the Habs fan just hammering you on giving the Habs Josh Anderson in the Domi trade. Do you want to address that? No, no, okay. because, you know, there's a reason why trades are made. Um, it's about trying to find ways to, to give opportunities to people in your organization and to give others opportunities somewhere else. And I'm not saying where that went. Um, we within know how that, that works and how this is all, what this is all about. So I'm not going to comment any further. Perfect. And we have one minute for the WHL fans. Can you repeat what you said an hour ago in our morning meeting about all these young stars coming up? I'm telling you, the Western Hawk League people, it's been a real treat to be able to watch uh, games in the last uh, few weeks, especially in the last uh, three, four days. Western Hawk League fans, uh, line up and get your season tickets in a lot of towns in the next uh, few months because this Western Hawk League has provided something in the last few weeks with younger players, and they got a lot to be excited about the next two, three years. A lot of real strong young players are going to be fun to watch. Absolute stars. Exactly. Yeah, so thank you, Rich. He's in town scouting in the Dub Hub. I'll see you tonight for the back-to-back -back games, but thanks for coming in and answering all our questions. Thanks for all you do. Thank you, Rod. Rich Sutter's, Rich Sutter's appearance is brought to you by Great Western Original 16. One of our biggest partners here at the RP Show is Great Western Breweries. Coming up next hour from the Winnipeg Jets radio crew, Jamie Thomas will join us. We'll get to your football questions and everything else. Hour two coming up on Game Plus TV, YouTube and Facebook Live, and of course, listen live at rodpeterson.com. No. It's kind of a funny... Head to YouTube.com slash The Rod Peterson Show now. You gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. Rockstar Supply Chain Solutions is Saskatchewan's only full-service supply chain company. Strategic sourcing, PO creation, and order expediting, VMI and vending solutions, and free delivery are just a few of the supply chain services we provide. If your company needs it, Rockstar Supply Chain Solutions can get it for you. 
Price, quality, service, Rockstar Supply Chain Solution is helping Saskatchewan companies buy better. We started Suds Car Wash in 2003. There's a bit of us in every part of the business. I've been working here since I was about 10 years old. Hard to believe it's been 12 years since. Our parents always taught us about the importance of quality of work and friendly service. And here at Saskarish, we're a family-run business, so it's really important that our customers feel like family. From all of us at Suds Car Wash, we make your car shine. IKS Live. IKS Live. Western Canada's premier production services company. LED. LED sign rental. Video. Video production. Event, event management. Look no further than IKS Live. Visit our website. IKS Live. Always the best seat in the house. IKS Live. Universal Collision Center is Saskatchewan's premier auto body shop. Our extensive process ensures that every vehicle that comes through our state-of-the-art facilities is returned pre-accident condition and that every UCC customer experience is an easy one. We're certified to repair all makes, all models, and all luxury brands, and Universal Auto Spa offers full-service detailing packages to suit you and your vehicle. Plus, we're the official body shop of your Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Universal Collision Center, 3910 Rochdale Boulevard and 2355 First Avenue in Regina. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. BDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Capital GMC is your used car destination. We're overstocked and priced to move, so shop online or in store to get the best deal on any one of our massive selection of certified pre-owned vehicles. Every certified vehicle includes the balance of manufacturer's warranty, 150 plus point inspection, roadside assistance and certified exchange privilege. So save the depreciation and buy pre-owned. Capital GMC is your used car destination at the corner of Rochdale and Pasqua in Regina. An original 16 to fit your active lifestyle. Introducing Original 16 Canadian Ultra Lager. Just 80 calories and 2.5% alcohol. Taste without compromise. Hey, Rod Squad. Now you can join the team with your very own RP Show gear. Head to rodpetersonshop.com and get yours today while supplies last. It's just like we wear on the show. Official RP Show gear at rodpetersonshop.com. No! It's kind of a funny story. I was on the stationary bike this morning watching the World Junior coverage. I'm like, we should have Rich Sutter as our World Juniors insider. Boom, send. I sent it to Rich. How about that? Not Clark. <laughs> so Rich wrote me back. I'm in! When Christmas rolls around, everybody's going to be locked down. You're all, we're all going to be watching the World Juniors, and we'll all convene here every morning to talk about the game the night before and tee up the next night's game. This is the Rod Peterson Show. Welcome to the Hour 2 kickoff, everybody. We've got Moose DuPont back in the bunker. Hey, Moose. Hi. How was your last 40 minutes? Amazing. I could just sit and listen to Rich Talk Hockey all day. I get the sense a lot of people feel that way. I wish he lived here. We could bring him in regularly. I know. What, what's the flavor of Cattleware Coffee you got going oh, there? Brazil. It's uh, Brazilian Seven Falls or something Ooh. like that. Oh, it's one of our favorites. Sounds amazing. Yeah. Well, when I'm done this, I'll go fill up with that. Um, a lot of leftovers from last hour filling, spilling over here into the second half kickoff. Coming up next segment from Manitoba's Information Superstation, 680 CJOB. Our good friend Jamie Thomas, the Jets uh, radio color commentator. Jets do not play tonight, correct? Uh, no. Good. That's probably why he can be with us today as part of a – they're not part of this eight-game NHL slate. But you know what? We can talk some football here, and I chuckle because that's – aside from the NHL questions that came in for Rich Sutter, obviously a ton of football questions for you and me. So let's welcome in a lot of our viewers through uh, YouTube and Facebook here – one, Chad's watching on YouTube. He says, for no other reason than the daily face-off between you and DuPont, I want to see Toronto and Vegas in the cup final. 
There will be blood in the streets. I want to see that, too. There will be blood in the streets over that. <laughs> and it was my one of my quick six show topics. The Golden Knights have won six in a row, and they're now tied with Colorado atop the National Hockey League overall standings with 64-point seats. Just saying. But if people say that the Canada division is the weakest, the Honda West ain't no shakes either. Uh, no. <laughs> just, just, have you seen the winning percentages of Anaheim, L.A., and San Jose? Don't even look. I know. So I'm just. It's two, and then even the, like, three, four is, no. Yeah. This is funny. I got to throw this in. I think about this way too much. Mike Blackbird's watching in Toronto, and he says, does Rich Sutter watch football? Does he like NFL or CFL? Look, Rich, I said we've been friends 24 years now. Can't believe how old we are. But he, he was always like a Ryder fan because of my role with it. And now when I left the Riders, he's one of the first guys that I talked to. And now, what did he say? Was it you or to my brother that he was like, so what's going on with the CFL? Are they playing? Are they not? Are they folding? They're not really following it. Right. And that's just NHL people. <laughs> hockey, hockey people. Hockey people. They don't care about football period he just said he watches hockey 24 yeah. 7 and this is now the world that i'm immersed in now and it just annoys me because a lot of the football people say to me oh i don't watch your show when you talk hockey why do you got to say rude crap like that because the hockey people never say that about football they just they don't crap on it they just don't, they don't even think about it exactly i know but that's the difference between the two sports like night and day yeah it's you know, when you're not comfortable in what you're doing, right? And, and troll, it's just the troll mentality, right? Yeah, I guess. You know, just don't watch. Shooters Shoot Basketball Podcast watching on YouTube says, I've never heard Rich Sutter speak before personally, but huge fan of his after that segment. He's just a good guy. He's a Sutter. Yeah. The sun shines on the Sutters every day. Don't ask me why. It just, it just does. So to the football stuff. Um, where did the guy go? Michael Alley, watching on YouTube. And I'm not sure where Michael's from, but he says, Rod, I heard your interview on another network. He said, your interview looks like a merger is happening. And as you said, they're putting a rule book together. Does it even make sense for the CFL to have a season this year? I'm just going to read a lot of the comments, Darren, and then we'll mush them all together. Sure. Um, From... William May says, will the CFL be weaker if the XFL merger happens when the American quarterbacks leave to play down south? From the raging Dolphins maniac, he is in Syracuse, I believe. He said, if a CFL-XFL merger happens, could the new league play all their games here in the United States if they can't play in Canada? You see, I just, oh yeah, Michael Alley, you're from Los Angeles. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Is my memory completely shot? No. Or is it just today? that Maybe I'm, it's just today. I was telling Darren last night in the press box before we did the hockey game, I said, this is all so new to me. I used to be able to handle, I used to reply to everybody when I was on the air just in this province. But now it's all over the continent. I can't remember people's names. I, I don't have time to get back to everybody. And it's very, it's bothering me. You can tell that it's bothering me. I can. You're so good at, at getting people's names and locations. My whole life's been about that. Yeah. I got to get used to it. Uh, Tank Abbott says there's going to be a lot more hockey people when the CFL is eradicated from the earth if they don't get their act together. And oh, yeah, the Raging Dolphins maniac says I'm in Rochester, New York. Of course, I said the red, white, and blue, the Americans. I'll get it. Of all those comments, what, what, what do you think? It always makes sense to play, Right. If you're going to go XFL, CFL route and change the game to four downs, it still makes sense to play this year because all the stadiums in Canada are still going to be full. Not with fans, but like there's, there's going to be a team that plays in Regina out of Mosaic Stadium. There's going to be a team in Winnipeg that plays out of IG Field. There's going to be a team in Ottawa, right? These stadiums need those tenants. So if there's going to be football teams in those communities, it doesn't matter, three down, four down. They need to play. They need to generate revenue. The Rough Riders will always be here, right? So stay top of mind. Keep the fan base engaged. doesn't matter if it's three or four down. It makes sense to play, even if you're going to switch your game next year. still makes sense to play if you can. Dubes, dubes. Now we're getting somewhere Yeah. in that. And hang on, Jeff, in Winnipeg. I'll get to your comment. But in that, 
with the Russ Jackson comment that we just skimmed across last hour. Let's spend a little more time on it. Russ Jackson, the greatest Canadian quarterback ever in CFL history, telling 3 downnationcoms John Hodge in Winnipeg that he fears for the future of Canadian football if there's a merger. His heart sank when he first heard about this. Well, the way I look at it, you just said there will always be a Rough Riders. Well, if you are that dead set against a merger in four-down football, then you might not always have a Rough Riders. That's what I think we need to realize here. Or if it becomes that CFL that it used to be, that Robert Van Stone of the Leader Post here, the columnist is purporting, or Jim Hobson, the Hall of Fame former Rider president, if they go back to that, that can function too. The CEBL is doing it. The CPL is doing it. That can happen. But everybody needs to decide what they're doing. Tank just said it. They need to get their act together. Do you have a sense that the nine CFL owners and presidents are all in one direction as we sit here today on where this needs to go? No. I think if, if they did and they were unified and, and really sure of where they were going, we'd know, right? You'd be unified. You'd know exactly you're on the path. But when you're unsure where you're going, you don't want to commit to anything because you don't know which way you're going to go. So you commit to one and then do the other, and it looks bad, right? So, no, I don't think they're on the same page. I think it's incredibly difficult when you got nine different people in nine different markets, nine different interests, and multiple different business models. It's hard to be on the same page. So I don't think they're on the same page, and maybe one day they'll be there, but... You see what I'm saying about yeah. Russ Jackson's fear, though? Oh, yeah. He fears that the Canadian game's going to go away. Well, if you keep it... You might it lose. might die. It might die. And it doesn't <laughs> right. mean that the only way to save the Rough Riders is to go four down football. It's not what we're saying. But if you're not open to ideas of change, it might mean the end of you. Are you willing to cut off the leg to save the body? That's where we're at. Yeah. And so to the viewers here, Michael Wynn says on, he's watching on Facebook, too much overanalyzing on this. Let's just play football, please. And thanks. Well, Michael, if, if we could just wave a wand. In open training camps in a month, they do it. We can't. You not understand there needs to be critical thinking. The lack of critical thinking is what got them into the mess that they're in right now. Let's just not think about it and go play ball. Huh? <laughs> That's the damn problem. People actually think this way. I know. And it's... it's the game will sell itself. It <laughs> It's a wonder, no, it doesn't. wonderful romantic place to be, you know, to think, you know, and football players want to play. They don't want to worry about the business, right? They, they just want to play. They want to get on the field and play and entertain the fans and that's all. And the fans don't care because they just want to go watch football. So just get on no, the field. No, but it has to be three and, downs. And play. But unfortunately. But there's that crowd. We can't figure it out. There's that crowd that doesn't want to see a change. So I'm just, again, back and forth here. I love it. It's the second Half kickoff, Jack Fulton's watching in Vulcan, Alberta. He says, I don't care if we merge with the XFL and go to four-down football. I just want football in Canada ASAP. Wayne in Victoria, British Columbia. I hate the idea of the CFL playing four-down football, but if that's the only way to see my riders play, then I'm for it. You know, thankfully, the problems in my life, because I've been through my own personal hell, they're not as big as what... Some people are going through in life, bill payments, right? Health right. issues. Um, but I just think I didn't become a CFL fan until 1988. Not that that disqualifies me from having an opinion, but I didn't. That was not till grade 10. I was a hockey and baseball guy. Um, there are people that, that they, they, they love the CFL like I love the Regina Pats. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I've got red, white, and blue coursing through my veins that's my love and if you don't know that you don't know me so I'm trying to for those that are just welded to the three down game in Canadian football because they love it so much you know what I'm saying and I know a lot of Bob Irving voice of the Blue Bombers right tremendous example of that kicking and screaming towards a merger but I sit there and go if my beloved hockey team was about to fold and the only option was to you know, merge with all the provincial junior A teams and the junior B teams. We had one league just within this province, maybe. I would do it. You know, for the sake of the game, I would say, let's do it. Whatever it takes. Yeah. Because I'm trying to relate it to what do I love the most? Right. 
And I, See what I mean? Some of the major junior I'm trying Regina to, Pats hockey club. Yeah, I'm trying to take it a step further. There's not really a way to change hockey. It's not like it would be different. You know how you would change that. It would change the league you play in. Maybe it's not the Western Hockey League. Maybe the Western Hockey League exists, but the only way for the Pats to survive is to go play in the Junior A League or Junior B League. You know? Let's would do you it. do that? You'd be into watching them play just to watch them play, even if they're not in the big WHL anymore, the big Junior League. Yeah. Still watch them play. So it's, you know, what do you need to do to, to survive, right? What do There's, you need to do? Uh, I always, people really seem to like my recovery uh, parallels. I'm a big whatever works guy, two W's, whatever works, whatever works to make your life better, right? Yeah. And that's where I would be with the Regina Pats. So uh, Jeff Kibilis watching in Winnipeg says, I love my NCAA football. I get flagged for it, but hey, it's my thing. My guess, Jeff, is that you probably grew up with some connection to college football. Like I grew up with a connection to junior hockey through my dad. Right. So and I with college football, I've always related it to major junior hockey. It's imperfect. And there are younger athletes. They make mistakes. That's what makes games unpredictable. There's a more human element to it. Yeah. Right. College football made junior hockey, major junior or junior A. Um, there's a there's a lot of great it's beneath sports watching on Twitter. And Dar Ragan. On YouTube, they both say the same thing. Is three downs the hill that the CFL dies on? We can keep the waggle or 12 players. The, C the hill the CFL will die on is the ratio. When we first started farting around with this five weeks ago, uh, Wednesday will mark six weeks of the CFL-XFL thing, we talked about how cute the rouge, the three downs, the end zones, the this, the that. The cornerstone of Canadian professional football is the ratio. Everything else is just window dressing. Do you not agree? Kind of. You know, when it comes, for me, when it comes to the importance of it, I do think that's very important. I think it might be the most important nuance to the Canadian game. Having Canadian players in the game is important. But from a fan's perspective, once you flip the coin and kick off for the first time, you don't know about the ratio. You don't know if that guy's Canadian, that guy's. You're not paying attention to that. So what makes the Canadian game unique not what makes a canadian what makes a canadian is those canadians playing but what makes it unique is three downs the rouge the wide field the waggle 12 guys on the field those are the things you notice when you watch a game the differences from the american game to the canadian game but you're right the ratio it might be the most important and when we watch the game we're not even paying attention to it but behind the scenes extremely important to grassroots canadian football so are you noticing, I, I want to follow this up with Jeff Kibbelis in Winnipeg. Remember what I said? You grew up with college football in some regard. He right. just wrote back, you bet, Rod. My dad, who is who got me into it, he loved American football over Canadian. So I think people don't, I spend so much time examining what makes people tick. What makes you do the things that you do? Whether it is... And that's in the recovery world. I've just translated it to sports. What made you abuse this person? What made you abuse this substance? What makes you behave this way? That's why I can walk into a room with what most people would think is a caged animal and just sit down and go, what's going on, man? Why are you doing what you're doing? Crazy, right? Right. But I'm just saying, you're, you're, you, a lot of what your fandom is comes from when you were a little kid. Peanut Butter Pete's watching in Estevan. He says, I agree. What do you agree with? With dupes or with me? Nelson, our content creator, says, are these people saying they can't watch four down CFL football, the same ones who stopped watching hockey because they took away the two-line pass or when they made the players wear helmets? Probably. I mean, the, the problem is a lot of people say things that they don't mean. And Jeff Fairholm, my favorite Rough Rider ever, we, we would sit around and have these talks. Like, Rider fans say, I'm burning my tickets if you don't fire the coach. All this. And Jeff's like, they never do. They just say that. Yeah. But the problem is, if you've got a weak leader in any regard, politically, sports, your business, if he's influenced by those people, that's when it becomes very scary. They make their decisions based on what the last guy that tweeted at them was. Yeah. Anyways, we got to take a break, and we will talk 
Winnipeg Jets with Jamie Thomas and more of this when we come back from 680 CJOB, Manitoba's information superstation. You're watching the RP Show on Game Plus TV Network, YouTube and Facebook Live, and 24-hour sports talk for Suds Full Service Car Wash at rodpeterson.com. Listen live. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You got to subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. IKS Live. IKS Live. Western Canada's premier production services company. LED. LED sign rental. Video. Video production. Event, event management. Look no further than IKS Live. Visit our website. IKS Live. Always the best seat in the house. IKS Live. At Prairie Mobile, you can get the phone you want when you want. All smartphones are $0 every day. With convenient locations across Saskatchewan, Prairie Mobile, your Sastel authorized dealer, has you covered. Visit us online at prairiemobile.com. People donate blood for moments like this. But there are lots of reasons why Canada's lifeline needs donors every day. Like the fact that someone with leukemia can eat up to eight units of blood a week. Or that donated blood lasts no longer than 42 days. Or to help new moms and babies, like Henry. There's lots of reasons to donate blood. That's why we need donors every day. The need for blood is constant. Join Toyota and our Toyota dealers in supporting Canada's lifeline. Some of the challenges we face with the CT technology that we have today is some of the deficiencies in around integration with some of our other systems. The addition of, of two new 40 simulators uh, within the programming of the Saskatchewan Cancer Agency is, is going to have significant impact on, on you know, the care we provide to the people of Saskatchewan. Bronco Plumbing and Heating, proudly serving Regina and surrounding areas since 1978. We are excited to announce the new Bryant Furnace Trade and Allowance Program. If you have a working Bryant furnace, 15 years old or less, you may be eligible to receive a new furnace at a discounted rate. If you'd like to take advantage of the Bryant Trade-In Program or to hear how we can help improve your home, give us a call today at 306-781-2090. Direct West has been the bridge for me from not dealing with social media or digital presence to having a presence. You have to take the leap of faith, so to say, and I'm glad we have. Direct West has helped us out immensely to get our presence online as far as digitally and also with the social media page. To see the results is just, uh, just puts a smile on your face. <laughs> Hey, Rod Squad, now you can join the team with your very own RP Show gear. Head to rodpetersonshop.com and get yours today while supplies last. It's just like we wear on the show, official RP Show gear at rodpetersonshop.com. Show. All right, welcome back, everybody. Just ahead of Jamie Thomas, and we appreciate him joining us today. Just from the viewers on our chat through hour two here from Michael Alley watching in Los Angeles. He's a big CFL fan, but he says, I'm a big hockey fan, too. Saw Rogi Vashon play for the Kings. Uh, James in Borden, Manitoba says, it's not Monday till Rod yells at someone. Oh, we got that out of the way. And some uh, talk here on... CFL marketing, yada, yada, yada. But let's uh, bring in Jamie Thomas now because time's limited for an NHL broadcaster. We know that from oh, yeah. 680, 680 CJOB. How you doing, JT? I'm so busy that I had to I had to take some time to find the best internet in the house, which is in my daughter's bedroom. So that's why you have this beautiful decor behind me. So 
Well, thanks yeah, for sitting great. through the break. And yeah, yeah, I appreciate all of that. Let me, last time you were with us was from Bell MTS. What's the name of the practice Iceplex. facility there? What is it? Iceplex. The Iceplex, right. That was the last time. So it's been far too long. A lot's happened since then, Jamie. And let's mm -hmm. talk some uh, Winnipeg Jets hockey. Let me start here. Who's the best team in Canada? Because the Leafs beat the Oilers. The Oilers beat the Jets. The Jets beat the Leafs. I said, it's like a cat chasing its tail here. What's the answer to that question? <laughs> well, I think... It's, it varies day to day to sit on the fence in this answer. But if I look at the Jets roster, I will say they have the deepest forward group in this division, uh, in this country. So I think I give them the heads up. I also give them the nod because they have the best goaltender in the division too as well. And a guy, a, a group of six or seven defensemen that are kind of like the no-name group in the National Hockey League right now and specifically in the North Division. But I would say the Jets are, to me, and I see them all the time, and I've seen every other team 800 times like you guys have, um, I would say the Jets are the best team in this country right now. So when you are talking amongst your NHL media peeps, mm -hmm. Rich, like Rich Sutter was just with us an hour ago here in the bunker, and he said it's not as important to finish first. How do you yeah. guys feel about the race to finish first in the Scotia North Division and its importance? I, I think it's like something you can hang on your mantelpiece that you were the first place team in this division. But without fans, Rod, I, I just don't really see – an advantage for anybody outside you get to sleep in your bed one extra night if you play seven games so i don't think they're going out of their way and i'm speaking of the jets to go finish first in the division i don't think it's a lockdown thing i don't think we we have to have home ice in this series to be successful the only place where it gives you an advantage if you're the winnipeg jets when you play the edmonton oilers and you get that last change against Connor mcdavid and leon dreisaitl when they load up that top line which dave tippett did the other night so I think you get an advantage there, but overall the Jets have been phenomenal on the road because they played 17 of 22 there. They're quite familiar with it. They, they've they uh, kind of made a, a living out of playing well away from home. So I, I'm comfortable, and I think the Jets are very comfortable wherever they start the Stanley Cup playoffs when they begin. Nice. From some of our viewers, Wayne Jones watching in Winnipeg. He is watching on YouTube. He says grabbing the North Division banner would be special. For mm -hmm. sure, but if you toe pick it in round two, one, two, or three, it's not going to be as special. You understand that. Yeah. Uh, Jeff Jeff Cabillas in Winnipeg. JT and Edmonds are the best. I listen to you guys a lot. <laughs> I think you're very good. You're getting along Thanks. well. From Deregan, I hope I'm saying it right, Deregan on YouTube. Love the hockey and football talk. Let me ask you this, Jamie. It's your first time okay. in the show, and I'm listening a lot on yeah. NHL radio, man. It's too bad you're not traveling, right? But... How has it been oh. for you? It's like what it's fan. The difference between calling the game at home and then calling a game off a monitor, Rod, you know, this as well as anybody you've done it before. There's a massive difference. There's such a huge advantage when you see things, when you're standing over top of it rather than a monitor and allowing the television to, you know, the screen cuts off. Sometimes every, every rink has their little wrinkles in terms of the broadcast of how they work the cameras, sports and TSN do things differently. So I, I, I love calling games in the building. I can't wait till you can call them with, with people in them. But uh, I feel very fortunate. There's not many jobs uh, of this in the National Hockey League. There's 31 of them. There's going to be 32 real soon. So I feel blessed to have that opportunity. But it's been great. But, man, I would love to be on the road. Like, traveling is kind of a nice break sometimes to see other people in our business. That's, that's one of the parts that I love about uh, being in the media is talking to everybody in every other city and, um, so I, I miss that part of it. I miss a lot of my friends, but this is this has been I'm glad we're playing hockey. That's the first and foremost. I'm glad for the most part the Jets have been healthy. And I think outside of the run in in Vancouver, uh, the Canadian hockey teams have done a fantastic job fighting COVID. It's been the safest place, there's no doubt. And, of course, come next year, hopefully next year, uh, it all gets back to normal. So let me ask you this, where the Jets are at. I think you mm -hmm. had them predicted to be pretty pretty high in this Scotia North Division, but it's literally like you know you're going to be in the playoffs. The question is now how far you're going to go. And I just get this sense mm -hmm. in Winnipeg that the fans are just like bubbling. It's a good it's a good bubbling. Yeah. They're not Paul Maurice bub sure. wanting him fired bubbling. They're like no. we could win the Stanley Cup here. Have I sensed mm -hmm. that right? Uh, that, yeah, that, that makes sense totally, Rod. And, and I I could see why Jets fans are getting excited. You know, you have these little hiccups every once in a while. You know, you lose to Edmonton three nothing, but that was following a five game road trip. It was a lot. You know, that's that classic. I don't want to say trap game, but whenever you come home from a long road trip, the legs aren't really there. They only they had the day off beforehand, but they're so deep up front. Um, you know, they add 
Jordy Ben at the deadline. So now you have seven, eight defensemen that you can piece in in your lineup um, in the playoffs should you run into injuries. That's the bonus part. And again, I, I mean, I sound like a broken record, but Hunter Hellebuck has been so good. You know, there's a little stretch there where you're kind of concerned. He had eight games where he let, allowed three goals or more, but then all of a sudden he locks it down. He's been stupendous for the last 10 games. And I think he's pulled himself back in the conversation for the Vezina Trophy, which is clearly Andre Vasilevsky's to lose at this point, the way he's been playing. But they're they're comfortable on the road. They're they're good at home. They match up very well against any team that's going to go up against them in the North Division. It's just such an unknown outside because I don't know about you guys. I've watched nothing but Scotia NHL North Division hockey this year. I may have slipped out a couple of times for the outdoor games, <laughs> but man, I, I just been so focused on this. But I know Colorado will be a handful wherever they slide in. Vegas is going to be tough. Like the East is not easy at all. But I I, I think the Jets with their depth up front. It's the first time in, since 2017 18 they've had a fourth line that Paul Maurice can rely on. And because of the schedule that they've had, he's been able to roll four lines. And that's why everybody's fresh. Mark Scheifele's not playing 25 minutes a night. Josh Morris, he's not playing 25, 26 minutes a night. So it's a pretty rested group. Um, they've had the benefit of this, you know, they don't play till Thursday. So they get another break here in the schedule. So I think they're healthy, touching wood as anybody in the league right now. And I think they can go up against anybody. Uh, anybody at any time i'm absorbing everything you just said number one great use of the word stupendous two <laughs> yes thanks we had ryan leslie on who's the host of flames uh television which what you used to do and it's the same thing he's like i can't tell you what the ducks are going to do or gets labs going to do i'm not even paying attention to that and the thing is yeah. i get it you're so ensconced in your own world of what you do now producer there's not much room for anything else that's why i'm enjoying all the stuff I'm doing in life now, from auto yeah. racing to you get a variety to run. You get oh. variety every day. I, uh, we're I'm Scotia NHL North every day. Like the, oh, I know. I'm so I'm... trained now to say Scotia NHL North. I don't even know how to say North Division anymore. That's how much we're we're buying into the product. <laughs> so so, a couple Clark's got some questions. I'll fire those at you. But our poll question today, for Capital yeah. Ford and Universal Collision, Capital Ford located right across from Polo Park Mall. Who's the most underrated player in the National Hockey League? The options are Nick Ehlers, Alex Barkov, Bo Horvat, and Sebastian Aho. And Ehlers mm -hmm. is leading by a nose over the Panthers' Alex Barkov. You see Ehlers all the time. Tell me about this guy. And is he ever going to be regarded as the NHL superstar that he probably is and should be? Um, I, a long playoff run will change that, Rod. I think, you know, that just remember how Mark Scheifele came out in 2017-18? People in Canada knew how good Mark Scheifele was, but then he has that stupendous run, especially that series against Nashville in the second round, and people start to know who Mark Scheifele is. You need a long playoff run for players to get their due, unfortunately. Nikolai Ehlers is so un so un so fast, and there's been a big change to his game because Paul Maurice takes his young players and puts them on the top line with Blake Wheeler and Mark Scheifele to teach them how to play the defensive side of things because the Scheifele line goes up against the other team's best lines traditionally every night. So you can't help but learn through osmosis. Plus, Blake Wheeler is such a good leader, what he does on and off the ice. So you learn from that. But Ehlers has really benefited from the trade of Patrick Laine because he's no longer looking to tr pass to Patrick Laine. So now Ehlers has that shoot-first mentality that he had in junior hockey, and the Jets are benefiting from it. So is Nikolai Ehlers. He's a little bit older. Uh, you know, you, you know how to take care of your body a little bit better. You know how to train a lot better. So he's he's just really coming into his own. And I hope outside of this division, outside of this country, people start to appreciate just how good he is because he's he's pretty special. And it's a great contract the Jets have him signed to right now. And this is a guy that's going to score 30 goals in the NHL for a very long time. 49 and 37 in Halifax of the Q for Nikolai Ehlers, which you probably know. Um, James in Border Manitoba watching says Winnipeg is blessed with great hockey announcers, starting with Kurt Kielbeck. And I got to say this, Jamie, I walked by the Kurt Winnipeg ice. Great. I walked by the Winnipeg ice booth the other night in the dub hub. And I'm like, oh, Mitch Peacock's for good. I forgot how good Mitch is. And as you know, he's calling yeah. ice games on 1290. So, yeah, Winnipeg knows their hockey. I'm calling. Munzee and I have this deal. Winnipeg's Canada's mm -hmm. hockey capital. Saskatchewan is Canada's football capital. Called it a draw. He was okay with right. that. You're good? That's fair. Okay. Yeah, I'm good with that. that that's fair. From producer Clark, what's the latest on Blake Wheeler? 
Okay, so Wheeler was cleared the other day um, before the game against the Edmonton Oilers, but because the Jets had these four days off between games, they thought it would be better just to give him the extra four days. And because the day he was cleared, it was just the morning skate. So Paul Maurice traditionally only puts guys in if they've had a practice or two before he puts in the lineup, no matter who they are. Um, so Wheeler is good to go. He's, he's cleared to, to play. So he will play Thursday against the Toronto Maple Leafs, and that's going to cause some movement in the Winnipeg Jet forward groups. You know, that's kind of all I got for Jets questions, and I know that's what you're used to answering, but can I just throw a CFL one at you? I think people will yeah. forget that you were at TSN 1150 Hamilton. You got a lot of great friends there, a lot of people affected mm -hmm. by it going off the air. What was that experience like, just for a CFL wrinkle at you, uh, in Ticat's town, Tabby's town, Steel town? Yeah. What was that like? Well, you, I remember phoning you when I got the job and, and talking about what Hamilton was like and, and what a what a great football city, right? It's, you know, there Hamilton is so underrated when it comes to the whole GTA because Toronto overrides everybody and clearly it's the best, you know, CFL market in Ontario in, in my opinion. I know Ottawa might have a say in that as well, but uh, Hamilton is so fantastic. But what an experience it was to do pre and post game shows you you when you cover the cfl with like i did with sportsnet you're not really ingrained in it because you're doing so much hockey but i really got to know a lot of the general manager assistant general manager sean burke is a fantastic individual taught me a lot you know like there's it was it was a great experience for me i wish it could have lasted a little bit longer but where i am right now is where i'm supposed to be but it, it was covering the cfl every day was was it was was a pleasure and I, I miss going to the Grey Cup. That's another thing that uh, was one of my favorite things to do every year in November, no matter how cold it was, wherever we were. Again, getting to gather with friends and talking about football was, uh, was, was one of the great parts of the job. Oh, for sure. Well, Jim Hobson, and you would know him, the Hall of Fame former yeah. Rough Rider president, said to me many years ago, he said, life has a funny way of getting you where you need to go. And in your yeah. case, boom. <laughs> I don't think you're complaining. Yeah. But I, I'll just say no. this. You did either text me or DM me one day saying, I got Ken Austin coming on today. How do I interview him? What should I ask him? And I was literally like, <laughs> <laughs> where do I go? With it's like, it's like, not an easy guy. Jump on it. Jump I know. On the grenade. Not an easy guy to interview, Jamie. No, no. But you know what? Outside of, he, he reminds me a lot of Daryl Sutter because you talk to Daryl Sutter outside of hockey or outside of being a member of the media. Best guy ever. So it's just, it's, it's incredible the difference between the two and it's business and then friendship, you know, Daryl Sutter puts an arm around you and gives you, might give you a little bit of a headlock. And, but then when the media, when the microphones are in front of him, I'm like, is this the same guy I just talked to about five seconds ago? So it's, Ken Austin is very similar, very similar to that exact same person. I remember Brent Sutter one time, all business. And when I was covering the Lethbridge Hurricanes, I finished doing a one-on-one -on -one with him. He slapped me on the butt. He's like, good job. And I'm like, what's what what, what happened <laughs> we, well, i told you we just had rich in an hour ago and he's probably yeah. the most affable of the sutters i would well yes, he would certainly tell you yeah ronnie's up yeah. there but i did a banquet in paradise hill sask with daryl about 16 months ago before the pandemic and i just threw stuff back at daryl yeah he didn't really like that either like on the on the mic in front of the you know what i mean he was just sort of like yeah yeah. How dare you oh. question me? Yeah. Oh, well, whatever it is. Rod, like one time in Vancouver, I was covering the World Juniors, and I was got, you know how the, the assignment desk sends you with the murder question from the news department, and you got to ask those questions, and you're the face of this question? I remember asking about the, the hospital, like where the people are, the kids are staying, and what the parents are like. And I remember Brent just looking at me, and they looked over the PR guy. And then, you know, the laugh from the rest of the media in the room. I'm like, you just got thrown to the wolves in front of all your peers. Oh, and yeah. Brent Sutter's giving you the death glare. And I'm like, I'm never going to live this down in that one. So I, I know that I know the Sutter glare. <laughs> That's the look. That's exact. And everybody is going in the back of the room. <laughs> all right. Jamie, like I said, we're listening. Go Jets. Thanks. And I appreciate the time as always, my friend. Yeah, great job with the Western Hockey League this year, guys. I'm glad it's going, and uh, at least the, oh, yeah. the players are getting the opportunity to prove what they have uh, before the NHL draft. That's fantastic news. Yeah, thanks, JT. It's been a dream. Appreciate it. Have a good day. Jamie Thomas from 680 CJOB, Manitoba's information superstation. And your home of the Winnipeg Jets and Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Should we take a break and come back with a sports update or do it now, Clark? What do you say? Okay, we'll take a break. Moose will come back in here. 
Uh, you're watching the RP Show Canada's daytime sports talk show continues after this on Game Plus Television, YouTube and Facebook Live and 24-hour sports talk. For Suds Full Service Car Wash at rodpeterson.com, listen live. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. Capital Ford Lincoln is Truck Nation. Looking to buy your next truck or sell your current one? Capital is Canada's truck destination. Shop online or in store to see the new 2021 Ford F 150, Ranger, Escape, and more. Right now is the best time to lease or finance a new vehicle. Can't find exactly what you're looking for? Let us help by sourcing your vehicle from our dealer network or custom ordering one that is perfect for you. Capital Ford Lincoln is Truck Nation, 1201 Pasqua Street North in Regina. Don't rack your brain trying to source the equipment and materials you need for your business. Rockstar can operate your entire supply chain, from PO creation to expediting your shipments, all from our office. Leverage the buying power of the Rockstar Buying Group to not only save money and time, but also the headache. From gloves to glue, we can provide it for you. Find out more at rockstar.com. Direct West provides us with stats and analytics, and, and it's amazing for us to look and see that, you know, each year we're 10 to 20 percent higher on our Google Leads. It's great to see the success that our, our locations are having. The Direct West app gives us an opportunity to be in one place for people to find uh, any of our locations or our commodities. Without Direct West, we would have to be in multiple digital places. I would recommend Direct West. They're great to work with. We started Suds Car Wash in 2003. There's a bit of us in every part of the business. I've been working here since I was about 10 years old. Hard to believe it's been 12 years since. Our parents always taught us about the importance of quality of work and friendly service. And here at Saskarish, we're a family-run business, so it's really important that our customers feel like family. From all of us at Suds Car Wash, we make your car shine. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. Capital GMC is your used car destination. We're overstocked and priced to move, so shop online or in-store to get the best deal on any one of our massive selection of certified pre-owned vehicles. Every certified vehicle includes the balance of manufacturer's warranty, 150 plus point inspection, roadside assistance, and certified exchange privilege. So save the depreciation and buy pre-owned. Capital GMC is your used car destination at the corner of Rochdale and Pasqua in Regina. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. Laid back and kicking it. Let's head back to the studio. Here's Rod. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Got a sports update coming up, but Moose has joined us. Hi. Hey, Moose. There Hi, you go. Rod. There you go. Very important question just came up from hey. the Shooter Shoot podcast guys. They're watching on YouTube and said, love the Deer Valley advertisement. What's your favorite hole on the track? It's number nine for me. Oh. I got to say, it's nine because it's so wide I hate you know nine. it's like a mile wide <laughs> i know it's very hard to lose your ball on the oh, ninth hole i know i always play that hole really really badly good question though eh yeah what's your favorite um i like the second hole the par three up Off high the hill. right down yeah. beautiful it's always okay. the, and i thought that would have been on your list it's always the spot where you get the good snapchat instagram <laughs> stories right <laughs> Well, it's so beautiful out there. So beautiful. Rich Sutter was watching the commercial for Deer Valley, and he was like, oh, can we go there? When like, he comes, not now. He comes back in the summer. Yeah. 
We'll take him. Um, he also said that I owe it to my wife to take golf lessons and become a better golfer. Rich said that? Oh, yeah. Hopefully she's not listening. Uh, sports update. Breaking news today. Alex Smith retired today after making an improbable comeback from a gruesome broken leg, saying he's ready to leave the NFL, but believing he's still able to play quarterback. Smith made the announcement on Instagram a few weeks shy of his 37th birthday, hoping to enjoy more time with his family. Smith earned AP Comeback Player of the Year honors for getting back on the field last season, two years removed from an injury that required 17 operations. The Ottawa Senators are looking to build on their recent 4-0 shutout victory over Montreal when they take on the Calgary Flames tonight. Meanwhile, another team coming off a shutout performance is the Edmonton Oilers, who host Montreal. Mike Smith made 26 saves as Edmonton blanked Winnipeg 3-0 Saturday. Oilers looking to get within one point of the peg for second place in the North. For Montreal, it's the first of a five-game roadie in Alberta. Patrick Marlowe is poised to make history tonight. The 41-year-old product of Aneroid, Saskatchewan, will surpass Gordie Howe's record for most games played in NHL history. In the dub hub, Cole Dubinsky scored twice and Drew Englott netted the winner in the second period for the Regina Pats, who beat the Prince Albert Raiders 4-3, snapping a three-game slide. Regina returns to action Tuesday at 6 p.m. versus the Saskatoon Blades on Access Now TV. Brandon Weekings extended their win streak to four games with a 5-4 overtime victory over the Winnipeg Ice. Braden Schneider scored the winner. Tristan Nielsen notched a hat trick for Vancouver and a 4-0 win over Kamloops. Goalie Trent Miner had a 27-save shutout. Ethan Renye had a hat trick as Everett won a battle between the top two teams in the U.S. division. Silvertips beating Portland 6-2. And Carter Such. Did I say that right, Clark? C Carter Such. Thank you. Led Edmonton with two goals and an assist and a 5-3 victory over the Hurricanes. Logan Barlogi had a goal and an assist for the Canes. And winners will be crowned in the Humpties Champions Cup today. Ottawa's Rachel Holman secured a berth in the Women's Championship final. She will face defending champ Sylvaina Tiranzini of Switzerland. Alberta's Brennan Botcher is in the final on the men's side. He goes up against Bruce Mowat of Scotland. The sports update for dubnetwork.ca. And for Ben Cahoon's G2G Protein Bars, order yours today. Get 20% off with the promo code RP Show at uh, g2gbars.ca. By the way, I had a guy tell me this weekend, you know, it's too bad there isn't like a Western Canadian TSN where they talk about the things that we care about in Western Canada. I'm like, Toosh! that's us. Did you just hear the sports update? Yeah. Humpty's. They curled the Grand Slam final today. WHL today. What else? NHL, Western teams, not just the Leafs. So there you go. We're doing it. More hockey, Paul. Always. Just for you. Hey, guys, are you ready for the face-off? More ready than he's ever been. Clark Monroe, producer Clark. We're facing off today for the ultimate fan zone in the Mad Greep Moose Jaw restaurant. Russ Jackson says he fears for the future of Canadian football if there's a merger with the XFL, his heart sank when he heard that there would be a potential merger between these two leagues and, and the chance to go to four-down football, changing the great Canadian game. The face-off today is, will Canadian football as we know it, the Rouge, three downs, larger fields, even the ratio as the CFL goes, will it die with a merger? And will we not have it played at the kids' level? Because that's still Canadian football. Darren, you go first with your take, and then I'll face off with you on that. My first thought is no. I mean, it's not going to kill Canadian football, but it might be the beginning of the end. It really might be because what do we do, right? Even at the small ages uh, of hockey, we start playing the game in order to level up and, and start mirroring the games as you level up. And now the Western League really mimics the NHL. When they make a rule change, it instantly is in the Western Hockey League. Sometimes takes a couple years to trickle down into minor hockey. Might be the same effect in football. If you go to four downs, um, they're not going to change right away. You know, for the next three, four, five years, it might not change. But look at BC, where they play four down football in BC throughout, you know, high school There's a lot football, of Ontario, too. You know, everywhere, yeah, that's not um, university football. They play four downs because the easiest competition outside of the province wasn't to go across the mountains, it was to go down into the United States along the Pacific Coast. So if 
your competitive if, if the CFL starts playing four downs, won't be long before you start you sports starts playing four downs. And if you sports is playing four downs, won't be long before high school does too. They're already playing NFL you see flag this, right? They're already playing NFL flag football with the kids. Dubes just argued both sides. So and I'm I'm teasing you. <laughs> I, I know. You're saying immediately no, eventually yes. Yeah, that's and I'm, I'm with you uh, or um, Russ Jackson's right. If there's a merger, it will be the death of Canadian football, and which is what he got around to. So I guess I'm agreeing with you. Thank you. Can you ever can you face off against yourself? That's like facing the mirror and dropping the puck. I know. You know. So the face off is brought to you by the Ultimate Fan Zone. It's your one stop shop for the sports fans on your list. Visit the Man Cave downtown Moose Jaw or on Facebook. And we've got a lot of viewers in Moose Jaw, but we don't hear from them. You people. In Moose Jaw, can you please tell me if there's Blue Jays gear at the Ultimate Fan Zone? Because my thick, heavy... Oh, Clark says it's coming in. Because they, they don't now. Okay, thanks, Clark. I got to get it from Clark. I can't... My thick, heavy bunny hug's too hot to wear under the lights. And it's summertime for God's yeah, sake. Yeah, and I got Joe trying to hook me up and see if they've got Florida Panthers gear. I want to buy okay. Florida Panthers gear. Oh, you're gear. getting on the bandwagon. For the playoffs, okay. right? And the Mad Greek and Moose Jaw, available for licensed dining, takeout, or delivery. Head to themadgreekeatery.com for more information. They catered a meal to the Moose Jaw Warriors in the Dub Hub on the weekend. Did you see that? I saw that. Way to go, Mad Greek. Because hockey players like to eat. We'll be right back with overtime. So much coming up. Viewer takeover. It's the RP Show on Game Plus TV, YouTube and Facebook Live, and 24-hour sports talk at rodpeterson.com. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. People donate blood for moments like this. But there are lots of reasons why Canada's lifeline needs donors every day. Like the fact that someone with leukemia can eat up to eight units of blood a week. Or that donated blood lasts no longer than 42 days. Or to help new moms and babies. Hi, Henry. There's lots of reasons to donate blood. That's why we need donors every day. The need for blood is constant. Join Toyota and our Toyota dealers in supporting Canada's lifeline. Universal Collision Center is Saskatchewan's premier auto body shop. Our extensive process ensures that every vehicle that comes through our state-of-the-art facilities is returned pre-accident condition and that every UCC customer experience is an easy one. We're certified to repair all makes, all models, and all luxury brands, and Universal Auto Spa offers full-service detailing packages to suit you and your vehicle. Plus, we're the official body shop of your Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Universal Collision Center, 3910 Rochdale Boulevard, and 2355 First Avenue in Regina. Bronco Plumbing and Heating. Proudly serving Regina and surrounding areas since 1978, we are excited to announce the new Bryant Furnace Trade and Allowance Program. If you have a working Bryant Furnace, 15 years old or less, you may be eligible to receive a new furnace at a discounted rate. If you'd like to take advantage of the Bryant Trade and Program or to hear how we can help improve your home, give us a call today at 306-781-2090. At Prairie Mobile, you can get the phone you want when you want. All smartphones are $0 every day. With convenient locations across Saskatchewan, Prairie Mobile, your Sastel authorized dealer, has you covered. Visit us online at prairiemobile.com. If you could spend less time in the field, more time with your family, and make more money at the same time, would you do it? Verges Farm Operations Planning Technology eliminates unnecessary turns, improves in-field communication, application accuracy, and reduces deadheading. Finish fields faster, burn less fuel, and use fewer inputs, all in one simple-to-use, web-based solution. Do more of what you want, when you want, with the people you love by subscribing to Launchpad by Verge today. IKS Live. IKS Live. Western Canada's premier production services company. LED. LED sign rental. Video. Video production. Event, event management. Look no further than IKS Live. Visit our website. IKS Live. Always the best seat in the house. IKS Live. Hey, Rod Squad, now you can join the team with your very own RP Show gear. Head to rodpetersonshop.com and get yours today while supplies last. It's just like we wear on the show, official RP Show gear at rodpetersonshop.com.
You got something to say? You want to add to the show? What are you waiting for? Don't just sit there. Say something. Now, back to the studio with Rod. Welcome back, everybody, for OT. You ever just have one of those days? It's not a bad day, but it's just weird. It's just a day. Yesterday was very strange, too. I said to my wife like five times, is there a full moon today? I got a nervous twitch in my left eyelid. Okay. That makes it look like I got a lazy eyelid right now. I don't know why it is. I'm not stressed. I have no stress in my life. Slightly concerning. Stress causes nervous twitches and hives. Did you know that, Paul? I did. Neither of which I have, but uh, anyways, Leonard writing in on the Prairie Mobile text line from the 536. He says, if we lose the CFL, we have nobody to blame but ourselves. In Australia, the people, the private sector, the government support their athletes. That is why they win so many gold medals. Every Olympics, they're very patriotic when it comes to their athletes and sports. I would say the same thing about America. America. God bless the USA, who is incidentally back playing. From Metal Shingle Guy, writes in, the Spring League kicks off in May. He's just putting that out there. (laughs) Hey? Okay. Okay. Um, which I'll be watching, you'll be watching. Of course. Devin in Regina, the federal government is not going to give private owners a blank check with no accountability. It avoids a private owner putting the money in the personal checking account and declaring bankruptcy on the corporate side. That's how rich guys stay rich. A lot of talk about Steve Simmons' comment on the weekend in his column from the Toronto Sun about how the federal government should give money to the CFL. Um, And I'm at a point now where I don't, I don't know why everybody comes to me for my opinion because I don't think it should matter. I'll watch any kind of football. I'm a big enough fan. Hockey first, but I still love football. Watching the spring, watching fan control football. I'll watch cartoon football. But it's to the Joe fan, the average fan, sorry, the casual fan. Mm -hmm. Can they attract enough of them to be viable as the Canadian League? And the one thing that I keep hearing over and over and over again in the circles that I chat with, the CFL is not in a position not in a position of leverage. That's what I keep hearing. Yeah. And I think you're hearing it too. I know. And, you know, where does the leverage come from? And you're right. They're not in a great position of leverage. They don't have money, right? And and they need to get on the field, but they don't know how they're going to do it. And it's a tough spot to be in because then you're kind of hanging in the balance, but you don't want to admit that you don't have any power or any control. And that's where they're not why they're not saying anything. Of course. That's so what you like, think, right? Of course. And I like I get that. We've all been there at times in our lives, right? And you're not really sure and you're uncomfortable and you're not in a position of strength. But nobody wants to admit that. Right. So I understand. But you have to get over that this day. And then it gets better. The uh, secret in all of it is when you admit vulnerability. That's right. <laughs> that's when you start winning. Uh, by the way, Jeff, the Stamps fan, says, I get the eyelid twitch too sometimes, Rod. Stress causing it, causes it. I know stress causes it. I'm regarded as an expert in stress management. What I can't figure out, Jeff, is, is why I have an eye twitch when I have no stress. Do you know what the rest of my day entails? Do you know what the most important thing on my day today is? Close. I'm going to the keg to pick up steaks and taking to the Marriott Hotel to eat with Crozy, the uh, voice of the Brandon Wee Kings. My biggest stress of my day is, will those steaks be cooked in time to pick them up around 5.30? Yeah, will the timing be right so that they're not cold? That's the biggest stress in my day. So why do I have an eye twitch? (laughs) It makes no sense. Uh, Curling report, Brendan Botcher beat Kevin Cooey 6-2 in another big all-Alberta game on Sunday to book a spot in the men's final of the Humpty's Champions Cup today, while Ottawa's Rachel Homan, personal friend, secured the berth on the women's side. Botcher also knocked off Cooey in the same venue earlier this year to win the Briar. Botcher will face Bruce Mowat of Scotland in the final of the Grand Slam event today. Mowat edged Brad Gushu of St. John's 5-4 in the other semi. Botcher is the defending Champions Cup champion, having won on uh, the event the last time it was played in 2019. On the women's side, defending champ Silvana Tiranzoni of Switzerland will meet 2018 winner Rachel Holman in the final today. The Champions Cup is the first of two Grand Slams and the fifth curling event held in a spectator-free, controlled environment to avoid the spread of the COVID-19 virus. Curling Report is brought to you, as always, by Verge Agriculture, helping farmers plan and optimize their operations across every field. Try Verge's Precision Farm Tech software for free today at vergeag.com. And if you go to vergeag.com right now, you'll see the Monday Coffee podcast drop today 
with myself and host Lindsay Barch. We're talking about mental health and agriculture and the importance of reaching out for help if you ask for it. And as we're talking on the Alberta thing here, it's like an all Alberta show today, I feel like. Rich Sutter said, Paul, you'll like this. When Rich Sutter got up from that chair and went to, la- to leave, he turns to me and he goes, you know, you should say more of what you feel on there. Because that, he goes, that, he goes, that's what I think your edge is, is the other networks, they can't say what they think. It's so controlled. So you should say more of what you think. And I'm like, I don't think that I can say more of what I think. Yeah, I don't think we're holding anything back. <laughs> it, it makes it seem like we're holding back. What more do you want? It's funny gonna, that he would say that. It is. It is. And, you know, it's really fortunate we could get him in here. And it's so tough, you know, trying to social distance and do all those things. And we can't pack this place full of people every day. But, you know, one here, one there, we're able to abide by the rules. But it just, I can't wait till we can get more people in here and... Well, and, and because they enjoy it so much. Rich really was the bearer of good news in a lot of ways because he said, hey, out here in Alberta, where he lives, he goes, Game Plus is now included in the basic cable package, Paul. So Rich is like, I don't have to pay the extra money every week. And I said, that's tens, if not hundreds of thousands of new viewers in Alberta daily on Game Plus. Yeah. It's awesome. Uh, it's, and it's all great. I also loved that Richie loved the brand. Oh, yeah. That made my day, too. <laughs> hey, uh, Jeff, the Stamps fan says, I see you guys talked about pizza pops on Friday. My comment, they make Hawaiian-flavored pizza pops? Yeah, rumor has it. I'm not going to try them. Sean Fleming, former Spokane Chiefs goalie, said, nice for a change of pace. I'm not willing to do that. I'm not willing to move off of deluxe or pepperoni no. bacon. I like exactly. them too much. Um, I think that's about it. Sammy G, Sammy G's watching in Florida. He says, who doesn't love a great Greek? He's, I love the Greek so much. I married one. Sammy says, uh, does anyone care that yes, the league is in trouble, but what about all the players who haven't been paid in a year? Oh boy. That is so tomorrow hey, that we'll talk about. Oh yeah. We're out of time. Uh, see you keg for supper. We'll see the rest of you tomorrow. 10 a.m. Mountain noon Eastern here on game plus. Oh, I thought you caught it. McFly, hello?